Relevant Radio now presents the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, live from the Chapel of the Nativity at Relevant Radio. It's 12 noon on Wednesday, April 29th, the Feast of St. Catherine of Siena, and it's the Easter season, so I invite you to join me in praying the Regina Chaley. Queen of Heaven, rejoice, alleluia, for he whom you did merit to bear, alleluia, has risen as he said, alleluia, pray for us to God, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. Alleluia. For the Lord is truly risen. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant we beseech thee that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The entrance antiphon for today's Mass is, Here is a wise virgin. From among the number of the prudent who sent forth, who went forth with lighted lamp to meet Christ's Alleluia. Our opening hymn for today's Mass is number 523 in your hymnal. I use the St. Michael hymnal. For all the saints, number 523. For all the saints who from their labors rest, who thee by faith be. For the world confessed thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Today, we honor one of the great saints in the history of the Catholic Church, St. Catherine of Siena. She lived in the 14th century. She was the 23rd of 25 children. Uh, many of her brothers and sisters did not survive past infancy. And she's remarkable because she was a mystic. She was so close to Jesus that she had the stigmata, the wounds of Christ in her hands and side, one of the few saints who, who bore those marks. And she was pivotal in convincing Pope Gregory XI to return from Avignon, France, to Rome. Those were tumultuous times. She was born at the very beginning of the bubonic plague, but she survived it, and she died at the age of 33. What a great saint. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who set St. Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love in her contemplation of the Lord's passion and her service of your church, grant through her intercession that your people, participating in the mystery of Christ, may ever exult in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. There broke out a severe persecution of the church in Jerusalem, and all were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made a loud lament over him. Saul, meanwhile, was trying to destroy the church, entering house after house and dragging out men and women he handed them over for imprisonment. Now those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. Thus Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits crying out in a loud voice came out of many possessed people and many paralyzed and crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all on earth worship and sing praise to you. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Everyone who believes in the Son has eternal life, and I shall raise him up in the last day, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. But I told you that although you have seen me, you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me. And I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life and I shall raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We continue reading from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of St. John, all through this third week of Easter time. And in this Gospel, first there's the miracle of the multiplication of loaves, and then there's the long discourse on the Holy Eucharist, which took place in the synagogue at Capernaum. And you can still go there today, the old town of Capernaum on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee, and see the ancient ruins and remains of the synagogue. I was there maybe six weeks ago, so it's still very fresh in my mind. And it's a very important discourse because it's all about the promise of the Holy Eucharist. And there's two phrases here that I'd like to reflect on. Jesus says, I am the bread of life, and at this point in the discourse, you could say he's speaking metaphorically, but later becomes clear he's going to speak literally. And he promises us, us he promises us this, this, this promise, he makes this promise, whoever comes to me will never hunger. That's quite a claim. And it works both on the physical level, literally, but also the metaphorical level, because there's different types of hunger. There's the physical hunger that you experience when you don't eat food, but there also is that gnawing hunger and discontent when we're not satisfied. And that's the common plight of so many people in so many ages. They're just not satisfied. They're not happy. They're not at peace. And sometimes they don't even recognize that or it's very hard to admit it. And so if you ask them how they're doing, I'm fine. And how are you? I'm happy. But you can see many times in their behavior and their appearance, they're really not happy, they're not fine. And so we look for ways to, I suppose, medicate that emptiness or that hunger. It could be through activism. It could be through a relentless work schedule. It could be through distractions, expensive distractions, theme parks, movies, fine restaurants, fine wines. It could be through things which are in and of themselves harmful and sinful drugs or gambling or pornography or lust and all of these things we sort of search out to fill up that gnawing hunger but there's only one thing that can really satisfy us 
and that is union with Jesus Christ on the cross. And that's a paradox, because if you look closely at Jesus on the cross with the nails in the hand and the gaping hole in his side, the nails in the feet, we were thinking, you know, I, that just does not look very attractive, does it? There's a mystery there. And today, Saint who we celebrate, Saint Catherine of Siena, embraced the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. And with all of her will and all of her effort, she tried to know Jesus Christ and love Jesus Christ. It got to the point that she was so close to Jesus Christ that she actually bore the wounds of Christ in her body. It's called the stigmata. And there's only a handful of saints who've had those holy wounds of Christ in their body. The most recent one I can remember is St. Padre Pio. But there was also St. Francis of Assisi, St. Paul, the original St. Paul, and St. Catherine of Siena. She would go to Mass every day and receive the Holy Eucharist every day. And that was in the 14th century when it was not very common. And she would uh, take part in prayer and she would um, fast and she would do penance. And that gave her an amazing um, uh, serenity and peace that allowed her to speak with confidence and authority. And this is a time in Europe when women normally did not have much standing, but her standing was so great, she was so widely respected that popes and emperors and princes and kings would ask her to be their ambassador to go to other places and represent them. And this is before the internet and social media and cell phones. It's her reputation of sanctity spread throughout all of Europe. And so when she implored the French Pope, Gregory IX, who was the seventh pope in Avignon, France, to return to Rome, to the See of Rome, that that is the place where the successor of Peter should be, he listened to her. Isn't that amazing? And so that's the power of sanctity, the power of persuasiveness and the power of confidence that comes from that real contemplation of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Well, I also want to let our listeners know that um, we're bringing you this Mass live today on Wednesday, April 29th, from the uh, Chapel of the Nativity in the headquarters of Relevant Radio of Green Bay, Wisconsin. And we started doing this on Sunday, March 15th, as the nation headed into quarantine. We had no idea at that time how long the safer-at-home orders would last. It seems here in the Midwest, at least in Wisconsin and Illinois, it will last until uh, at least the end of May. We are praying for an end to the pandemic. We're praying for the safety of all those who are in danger. We're praying for an opening of the churches and that people have a great deep conviction that the sacraments are essential. We need the Holy Eucharist. We need the sacrament of confession. We need grace. And I know that's why you tune in every day. And no, it's not the same as actually being here. These are unique circumstances. But the fact that you're making this effort to tune in, the fact that more people are attending this daily Mass each day is a good thing for the church. Right? I'm very glad that you can do this. So I want to encourage you to invite your friends to participate and do the best you can by following us on relevantradio.com, on our stations, on our app, and sending your prayer requests to us at mass at relevantradio.com, sending pictures to, it allows us to be much more connected to you. Now please stand for the prayers of the faithful. Gather together here. As children of our Father in heaven, let us bring our petitions before him with confidence. We pray for Pope Francis and his intentions for the church and the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that through the intercession of St. Catherine of Siena, we may answer the call to holiness and live in the service of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That daily, each one of us can grow in the virtue of humility as a remedy for pride and the virtue of honesty as a remedy for deceit and distrust, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, that they will seek guidance from our Lord in order to protect our God-given rights, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to abortion in our country, which is the number one killer of human beings in our country, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For marriage and for all families, that they will be protected and strengthened in these challenging times. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who've died, and especially for the repose of the soul of Jackie Gibbons, uh, and for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And that reminds me, right before Mass, I got a text from Therese Romano asking for prayers for her father, John Conley, 96 years old, 
who passed away today. And we pray that the Lord might have mercy on his soul and bring peace and compassion to that family in these extraordinary circumstances. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our St. Joseph, St. Gabriel, St. Nicholas, and Guardian Angel Society members, and for all our listeners and supporters that Our Lady of Guadalupe will intercede for them, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we believe in your power and we trust in your mercy. We ask you to hear our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. If you're just tuning in right now, this is the Daily Mass live from the Chapel of the Nativity at the headquarters of Relevant Radio in Green Bay, Wisconsin. My name is Father Rocky. I'm the Executive Director of Relevant Radio. And we'll continue to bring this Mass to you each day at noon until the church is open. Although we're getting lots of emails from people saying they want us to continue even after the churches are open because they find it very convenient uh, to come and attend this Mass. So stay tuned for that. At this moment of the offertory, it's good for each one of us to offer God our gifts, the work we do on a daily basis, for instance. So your daily work is a means of encountering God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that, instructed by her teaching, we may give ever more fervent thanks to you, the one true God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to claim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life. And the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death. And in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this. All of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this. 
all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, the bishop here in Green Bay, Fernando, the prelate of Opus Dei. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you listening on air or watching at home, this is a moment to pray a spiritual communion. I wish my Lord to receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your Most Holy Mother received you the spirit and fervor of the saints. Our communion antiphon is, if we walk in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of his Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. Alleluia.
you can send your prayer requests to us at mass at relevantradio.com. We can't read them all on air every day, but I really do try to read them every day. I print them out, and I sit here in the chapel. I take out my yellow highlighter pen. I look for names and intentions. So you go ahead and do that. You send a picture of your family, too, if you'd like. So after we receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, it's good for us to make an act of thanksgiving. So many things to thank Jesus for. I'm very grateful for our listeners and our supporters and our benefactors, for all the people here who work at Relevant Radio, a great spirit of initiative, innovation, adaptation, good cheer, team spirit, integrity. I'm very grateful for our pro-life leadership in Washington, D.C., which for many people we found it rather surprising. And the fact that all Catholic schools and parishes and Catholic radio networks qualified for the payroll protection plan without having to compromise our uh, beliefs. Uh, this is uh, unheard of. And um, it, uh, it's been a great blessing for us. I'm thankful for that. <clears throat> but it's also time to pray. And at this moment, I'm praying that the East River, which is about 40 yards from here, that way, doesn't rise up much higher. It's got about five feet to go. We had big rains here last night, and uh, we're on the edge of a flood plain. It got real close last year during the winter melt-off, but um, we pray to Our Lady of Safe Harbors to protect us on that. Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us as even in this world it nourished the light of St. Catherine through Christ our Lord. Thank you for Amen. joining us for Mass, live it's, from uh, the Chapel of the Nativity at to be Relevant able to celebrate Radio. Mass with you every day. And it's wonderful when we do the Family Rosary Across America each evening. We take about 10 phone calls each evening. They're all over the country. Men, women, younger, older, the kids get through, which is a joy because it means they're praying with their family. And we've received what I, I consider as remarkable testimonials, prayers answered. And I encourage you, if you have a need, to join us each evening. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. O Lady of Good Health, our merciful Father chose you to be a powerful intercessor in times of trouble and woe. As in past centuries, when you have interceded to end contagious diseases, we implore you now to end the coronavirus, which is damaging the health of many and spreading fear in our communities. Teach us not to be afraid, to be courageous and generous in offering assistance to others, and to live joyfully in the state of grace. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. This Friday, 3.30 p.m. Central Time, join us right here as we consecrate Relevant Radio and our worldwide family of listeners to St. Joseph on his feast day, St. Joseph the Worker. And please be sure to join us again at the same time tomorrow on the Relevant Radio app, online at relevantradio.com, and on all our local Relevant Radio stations. And spread the word. Tell everybody you know about Relevant Radio. Regina Celi, Laetare, Alleluia, quia quem eruisti portare, Alleluia, resurrexit sicut dixit, Alleluia, ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia. Thank you for joining us for Mass, live from the Chapel of the Nativity at Relevant Radio.